Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to do a Tie-Dye Alien. I've had a whole bunch of requests for these and it's a design I used to do a long time ago but I haven't done many of them lately so I was kind of looking forward to doing this tutorial. So anyways what we're starting with is a t-shirt that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out so it's just barely damp and then I turned it inside out and then I also centered it. I, uh, I'm going to do a different design on the back than on the front. So I want to have my front separate by itself. So I do have a video for it called centering or folding your tee in half. Basically what I do is tuck one sleeve into the other sleeve. So both of them are tucked in over here. And then I line up the shoulder seams and then kind of shake it out. But I will put a link to that video down in the description box. Um, so anyways, when I'm starting out, I like to get my alien on here. I usually will put it three to four fingers down from the collar here just so that it kind of puts it right on the chest. Um, so you can make a mark here. So three fingers down put a dot there and then you can make a stencil to draw your alien on but I like each one of my aliens to be kind of individual so I always freehand this sometimes you can end up with a funky looking alien but that's part of the fun too so I just kind of freehand an alien on there so that could be interesting I might have made it a little bit too wide but we'll see here and then I usually will do the big eyes. And then I usually do just a little mouth. And I think this one needs a nose. So we're going to put just a little bit of a nose in there. So there's my alien face there. Uh, one of the things I have done sometimes, I'll put a, a long neck on the alien. So I would just draw this down here and then go out for a little bit of shoulders. But today I'm just going to do the face on there. And then on the back of the T, one of the things I like to do back there is draw the alien ship on. So I usually try to make sure I'm kind of putting the design in about the, the same place. So I can see that this here is where the top of my alien is. Make sure I'm right in the screen here. So from there I can draw my little alien ship. So I usually just do kind of an oval shape. So we'll fold that up and then a little tractor beam is nice also. So we'll get to that folding in a minute. But that's the nice thing about centering your tee is having the front and the back separate from each other so that you can fold different designs. So once I have this drawn on front and back the way that I want it, then I just start folding. And you can fold from the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Oh, it's easier though to fold that back out of the way. So I have just the front here. And smooth that out as much as possible. And then we're just going to do an accordion fold here. And for the accordion fold, I just like to have my lines coming straight up and straight down over the fold. So I just flip this line here and match it straight up with that line. And I just go all the way up the head here. And that just puts this line nice and straight on the top here by going straight up and down over here. Basically just taking this and folding it straight up. And when you go around the corner, sometimes you have to twist your tee just a little bit to follow that line around. But that's the main thing you want to do, just keep that straight on top there. And sometimes if it does go off a little wonky, that's, that's fine too. The main thing is that you make sure to die along the drawn line and not the tied line if you're uh, sorry, if your face kind of goes wonky outside or whatever design you're folding, if it goes a little bit outside of the, where the tie line is. So, and in those instances, it's good to have the design drawn on the front and the back of the t shirt so that when you're putting your dies on, you can get those lined up nice, nice and perfect.
I'm going to use kite string to tie mine up, but you could tie that with sinew uh, because it, it, if you have a nice straight line there, then you can use a sinew and put a white outline. But I'm going to put uh, use thick black dye around mine, so I'm just going to use kite string to tie that up. Okay, and then I go in and do the face here. So for the eyeball, usually what I'll do is just grab the two corners of the eye here and try to fold that nice and half there. And then I'm just going to basically do an accordion fold, same way, on the eyeball. Okay, then I'm going to tie that up the same way with my kite string, but once again you can use sinew or rubber bands, whatever works the best for you. I just prefer the kite string myself. And then for the little nose, I usually will just kind of pinch that up a little bit and just tie that off because really we're just going to put just a little drop of thick dye on there and give that a little squeeze. So for this one here, I even will just take my string and tie my first little knot in there. Okay, so there's the nose. And then we'll do the same thing for the mouth. I'll just pre-cut my string. Get the actually this one I'm gonna do a little slip knot just to make it easier. So I tie a little slip knot in there, set that aside. And then I'm doing what I call a raised pleat, so I'm folding that up and then I'm going to fold it in a pleat style here. So that's just kind of raised up from the shirt here. And then I can slip this over and just however thick I want it, the mouth, I can slide that over and tighten that down. Here's the face, so we got the eyeball poked up, and I usually try to pull the excess fabric out of here, just making sure not to pull past my tie line here. So I just like to open that up a little bit. And then we have the little nose here. And then we got the mouth, and it's the same thing. I just kind of pull the excess fabric out of there. And then from there, when we start tying up the rest of the shirt, I'm going to scrunch this face up here and make sure that all of my my nose, mouth, and eye I can access to put dye on. But that's done with the, the alien for now. So now we're going to fold the back of the T here. So this is our alien ship. And I'm just going to fold down the line here. And then for this next part here, this here is kind of a sharp corner. So what I like to do is at the end of this run, it's on the downward side here, and I can take this other line and flip it up and around here. And just basically line it up there with the other folds. And you have to kind of twist the fabric a little bit. But once you get that twisted and get that little fold in there, then you can fold the rest of that line down for the alien ship. This time I'm going to leave my string attached because now we're going to fold down this line here and then this here is perfectly set up to tie that off next. So I'll just set that roll out of the way. And 
And now what I'm going to do just to create a little bit of separation, instead of wrapping over to the top, I'm going to lift this up and wrap underneath so I can kind of separate the beam from the ship a little bit. Because we're going to dye those in different colors. So I'm just kind of arranging all of my pleats here to get them nice and neat and then we're going to tie this beam up a little bit. Now that I got the, the beam tied up, now I'm going to tie the ship up a little bit here. So once again I just kind of try to even those pleats out just a little bit so it lays kind of flat. And then we will tie that up and I make sure to kind of hold that little bit of space in there so when I pull this string tight it doesn't pull these right together. You want to keep a little bit of separation there. Now the one thing that's happened on my ship as I folded things up and tied it off is my line went up above my tie line. So my tie line is right here. And my folded line is up here outside. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So this is my tie line. This is my fold line. So what I'm going to do is make sure that that die line is nice and neat there. And I'm going to continue that line on the back side too. Just to make sure that I get the actual ship dyed and not right where I folded it, or right where I tied it at, because that line is straight and this here is curved. So, but the other one, the beam is tied straight across, so we'll just darken that line up. Oh, and then we can tie this on the face, our die line there on the back. And now what I'm going to do is just scrunch the rest of this up and kind of get it all tied up. Whenever I have the sleeves tucked in, let's zoom back out. Whenever I have the sleeves tucked inside themselves, it's easy to just kind of tuck them right down into their own armhole here. That way they're not folded over top of the t-shirt and creating a little pocket where white spaces hide. So that way the sleeves are all condensed there in their own armhole. You can even twist them just a little bit just to take up some more of the slack. And then just scrunch the rest of it up however you like. Okay, there's the alien shirt. Let me get some gloves on. We'll get some dye splashed on this. All right, I have my gloves, and we're going to get started dyeing this alien shirt. So what I'm going to do start with is dye the alien face. Um, I'm going to use thick black dye that I mixed up and put in my little bottle here, and I will put a link to how do I mix my thick black dye down in the description there. But I'm going to do just a little outline here. And I'm starting on the back side just because the eyeball here sticking up when I dyed that. I don't want to try to flip that over anyway. So we're going to start on the back side and just put this dye on here. Okay, I'm back. I mixed my thick black dye just a little too thick. So we got it thinned out just a little bit here. I think that'll work better there. I still use my cuticle pusher to press it down in there. Just to make sure we get a nice black line there. But the thick dye helps make sure that you get just a little skinny line rather than a fat line. 
but you do have to kind of adjust it. Next thing is I'm going to dye the eyeball, the nose, and then the mouth down here. And with the eyeball, I just try to squirt some on there. I'm still using the thick black dye just because I don't want it to spread too much. But you can use the thin dye. You just have to apply your dye slowly and squeeze it around a little bit and use a rag to get the excess dyes out so they don't spread after you're done. And I'll show that here in just a minute because I still do that with the thick black dyes. So I got a lot of dye in there. So I can kind of use my cuticle pusher to press it around a little bit. Or just squeeze it with your fingers. But then to make sure that it doesn't spread too far. So this is for either thick black dye or thin dyes. You just take a rag and just put it over top and squeeze it. And that just gets some of the excess out there so it doesn't spread around on you. And I got it right down to just about the line which is where I like it at. I have just a little tiny bit here for the nose. So I'm going to do the same thing, squeeze some dye on there, and then I pinch it with my fingers just to squeeze it around a little bit. And then I use another clean part of the dry rag here to squeeze that and get the excess out. And then we'll put some here on the mouth. So now that's the alien part. I did the outlining. Now I'm going to go to the back of the shirt. I like to do all of my outlining all at one time. So this here is the spaceship and then this here is the beam of light. The beam of light I'm not going to outline because I don't want a hard black edge on that. I want it to be looking like, like, looking like it's light. A light beam. Transporter beam, whatever you want to call it, shining down. So we're going to put yellow on the outside of that. But on the spaceship, we're going to go ahead and dye that. So I'm going to outline it with a thick black dye. And then when I flip this over, I'm making sure that the eye doesn't flop over on me. So I'll set that back down carefully there and dye the back side of the spaceship. And now while I have this flipped over, I'm going to go ahead and dye this. So the spaceship, I'm going to do that in a gray color here. But I'm going to leave one little spot. And I'm going to put some yellow in there. This here is where our tractor beam or whatever is shining down out of. So I just, that's my own preference there. You guys don't have to put that in, but I like to put little details in when I can. And the rest of it we're just going to dye in the gray color. And then the tractor beam is going to be a, a really limey green color. So I'm going to, I have a bright green that I've mixed up. I used, uh, I probably filled a bottle, you know, a little bit fuller than this with turquoise or with lemon yellow and then I topped it off with turquoise to make the bright green and you can adjust the more yellow that you put in there the brighter the green is going to be and of course the more turquoise the darker the green is going to be so for my tractor beam <clears throat> I want that to be a really bright so I'm going to add some the yellow there and I'm just going to run some lines down back and forth here and then we're going to put the green over top so that's going to make it a really kind of limey green color and I can add a little bit more yellow just to lighten it up even more and then like I say the outer edge I'm going with the yellow so it just looks like the light is shining down and 
out from the beam. And then over here on the alien, pick this up and flip it around. This here is the back side of the alien. And I'm going to dye him in the same bright green, but I'm not going to put yellow on it. I'm just going with the bright green. And then for a little bit of texture, I'm going to add some uh, emerald green over top of this. have a small bottle so we'll just be careful with the big bottle I'm not putting it all over I'm not coating the whole thing but I just like a little bit of extra texture in there with the alien so I add just a little bit of a darker green on top of that okay and then I'll dye the rest I don't like to flip it too many times so I'm going to dye the rest of the shirt. I'm going to go in a sapphire blue. So this here is kind of a dark blue for a night sky sighting of the alien and UFO. And right around the alien, I'm just going to highlight him just a little bit with some turquoise. Just to make him a little glowy. And to stand out from the night sky just a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to put a darker blue over top, just a little bit of that. So this is my cobalt. Oh, it looks like I got a clog in there. Okay. Now we're going to flip this over. So we're going to outline once again. I outlined uh, the ship just a little bit with a little bit of turquoise and the alien out around the hem just a little bit. And then bright green around the alien. the alien tea. I'm going to let this batch for 48 hours and then we'll have some pictures here at the end. Thank you.